This conflict cannot be resolved through violence or unilateral actions. Negotiations are the path to lasting peace. For these reasons, we respectfully encourage the court to carefully calibrate its advice in this proceeding to support and promote final realization of peace and stability within the established UN framework set out in Security Council Resolutions 242 and 338. Well, for more on this, let's cross live now to international politics expert Nizar Fasak, live from the U.S. Capitol. Nizar, thank you very much for your time this evening. Now, as Biden Netanyahu tension apparently simmers at the U.N. court today, the U.S. very much showing it still stands with Israel. Yes, indeed, of course. The, the U.S. is um, stating its position, basically, that it stands by Israel. Uh, the statement, as the ambassador uh, Riyadh said, uh, is a political statement. It's not speaking to the uh, text of the law or, or it's not making legal arguments. It's trying to persuade the court uh, to not uh, make a, a, a statement that, in the U.S.'s opinion, uh, might undermine or uh, make more difficult a political solution. So the, the, in a sense, it, this is not the forum for such a statement. But then again, there is no legal stance for arguing that the court uh, is not, uh, does not have the jurisdiction uh, to decide whether the occupation is legal or not. Definitely, the International Court of Justice is the address to decide the fact of the matter, whether the occupation is legal or not. Would you say somewhat mixed messages from the US then? Because the US recently sanctioned illegal settlers in the occupied West Bank. True, but that's more smokes and mirrors. Uh, the sanctioning of the settlers, uh, of course, the US administration has been getting a lot of uh, pressure, including domestically, um, uh, unprecedented pressure from uh, American voters, and therefore they needed to do something. Uh, and therefore, that this action towards the settlers is an uh, American attempt to show that they are uh, quote unquote fair and they are uh, taking an approach to uh, curtail any party that is undermining uh, the peace process or undermining the ability to, to, uh, to come to a peaceful uh, resolution. Again, this is a political statement and not a legal one uh, per se. It might be a legalistic approach, but the goal is definitely political, which is the U.S. is trying to uh, create in its, in its uh, of course, in its context, it's trying to create a context that allows for uh, the negotiation between the two parties to resolve all their issues uh, through negotiations and not through uh, uh, military means or through uh, unilateral international or diplomatic means. And how do you expect Israel to react to this very open defense of its ally? It probably won't say much other than be thankful that the U.S. is standing with it. It will definitely double down on the narrative that uh, Israel is isolated and is misunderstood across the globe and that this is just another example of anti-Semitism. And if it weren't for the U.S. Uh, uh, position, uh, uh, nobody would be fair with Israel. So they'll definitely continue on this narrative, despite the fact that literally the entire international community uh, agrees that uh, the occupation is illegal. Nizar, thank you very much for your time. Nizar Farsak, live from Washington, D.